All right, KISS Army, welcome to the KISS FAQ Podcast. Thank you for giving us your time today and letting us into your head. I hope we don't do any damage. This is a KISS-related podcast by the board for the board. We hope that you enjoy. We'd love you to support this show. Please like, follow, and subscribe to us on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. Your likes and subscription helps us to grow and attract interviews and content. So please retweet and share our posts. Your contributions are appreciated. Welcome to the KISS FAQ Podcast. This is episode 510. I'm Ken, your host. And I have with me today... <laughs> Daniel. Hi, Ken. He's from Sweden. Lonnie. And Marcus Almighty. It's Mark. Greetings. All right. Well, we're missing somebody, Julian. Sometimes he or, pops back are, in. Are we really missing him? Wow! Ooh, Already wow. off the wow. jump. I didn't. Just say, I'm just kidding. I didn't you say but, that. But I have to say this: haven't he? I think he's been looking kind of tired the last two or three episodes. I think he needs a break, and then he'll be back full force. Yeah, yeah. he had a little jet lag uh, last time from coming back uh, from Europe. So, yeah. Yeah, it's okay. He's got other business to attend to, and whether he's just catching up on stuff or tired, and or, or yeah, but hey, hey, if he's writing a book, I'm all for it. You know, go ahead and do that. You know, you can skip an episode here and there. It's all right. <laughs> we'll allow it. <laughs> we'll we'll. Uh, all right, all right. So um, we got some news. Um, before we get into some topics, um, news, there was a uh, Vegas Rock Awards show that happened uh, earlier in the week. I think it was early in the week uh, with uh, Bruce Kulick was honored among other um, celebrities, uh, I believe. I think uh, guys from, I think I have it here, actually. Um, here we go. Other iconic musicians like Billy Gibbons from ZZ Top, Rick Nielsen, Cheap Trick, uh, Buck Dharma and Eric Bloom from Blue Oyster Cult, Kip Winger, uh, and, they go, and the list goes on, Ricky Rocket and, and some other people. Rocky Ricky Rocket? Rocket. Wow. Yeah, Ricky Rocket, Five Finger Death. Drummer. Let's see who we got. Danny Coker, yeah. Simon Wright of ACDC, Marco Mendoza. Tim Ripper Owens of Judas Priest. So, uh, I guess it was a, a some kind of you know special rock honor thing that he do there. So that's you know it's good that he's honored. Uh, that certain guys do get honored. That maybe some of these, well, some have and some not. Maybe have gotten into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. We know they didn't allow you know Bruce Kulick and and uh, you know past members, Eric Carr, and so on, to be included, inducted, when they do that with other bands. So this is a kind of a side thing. Mm. It's not the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, but whatever. Um, it's it's always good to be, you know, uh, inducted into some kind of music-related thing, that, you know, that's, yeah. that's you know, your life, you know, that you put your work into and you get it's awarded nice for it. get some recognition, for sure. Yeah, yeah. So, anything about that? Anybody else notice, see that, or that news, or there's some pictures too out there. I didn't, um, I didn't see it, but I, I saw the, obviously the pictures and stuff like that. But again, like what Lonnie said, I think that he's overdue for some acknowledgement to his contribution to the band. I mean, he was there for a long, long time, and yeah. you know, wrote a lot of stuff too with those guys and uh, some of the most notable you know guitar solos and stuff like that on kiss records are his so he, it's about time he gets a bit of the spotlight on him as well yeah yeah so hey, there's a picture of the award you know you wouldn't want to sit on that and you're gonna get poked pretty good <laughs> <laughs> it's like real sharp it looks sharp but uh, i think the main thing is he gets the recognition from the fans and the acknowledgement from the fans i mean all these award shows in america or, or uh, trophies and stuff they, they get. I don't know who's behind it, 
do they get any money or is it just recognition and why do they do that i mean the hall of fame is just a joke <laughs> i don't really i don't really see the yeah. the point with all these award shows some people wants to get in the spotlight and, and get a lot of famous people into a building and earn some money i, I don't i don't really see the idea behind this people like to be pat fans. on the back yeah people like to pat themselves on the back is the purpose of award yeah, shows yeah yeah so, so right i think bruce feels that he has the kiss army behind him and that's really all he needs yep definitely um and then we have that we kind of already know about uh, out there is the you know, confirmation, I guess, of the you know the Gene Simmons band in That's Brazil. Cool. It's called the what's it, Summer Breeze uh, Summer Breeze Festival, something like that, in, in Brazil, April 26, 27, 28th. and the Gene Simmons band is headlining, kind of one of the headliners. <laughs> On the first day, um, Gene Simmons band with Mr. Big and Sebastian Bach. Oh. So <clears throat> I think uh, Gene Simmons, <clears throat> excuse me, Gene Simmons, it's choking me up because Gene Simmons band. <laughs> um, yeah, I think that's pretty pretty amazing actually. That yeah, but he, if you if you recall when he was in South America, I guess in two thousand eight, nine, ten, or somewhere around there, maybe even later. Sebastian Bach was with him as well. And, you know, when they went on stage, Gene by far got the most uh, love from the audience. By mm. far. I mean, he's a star over there. He he's a big star. over there. Mm. Yeah. And when you watch them on stage, I mean, Sebastian Bach, he's a great frontman. But Gene Simmons, I mm -hmm. mean, he's up there. I mean, when he goes for, for the juggler, he is uh, a cool frontman. And I can recall watching those shows and, and thinking, man, Gene Simmons outshines Sebastian Bach, at least during those shows. I mean, Sebastian mm -hmm. Bach is also a bit older, but and um, so I understand why he's headlining. I think he always brings it live when he goes with his solo band. And I really enjoyed the, the show I went to a few years back. Well, you know, nobody can, well, not nobody, but very few people can match Sebastian Bach and his on st onstage antics. That guy is a ball of fire, that, you know, when That's you watch cool. him go on there. You know, he's he, if you get on his bad side, remember that, remember that video back in the day when he was with Skid Row and somebody threw a bottle at him, the guy oh, literally man. jumped into the audience and beat the snot <laughs> out of the guy, you know. So, yeah. so you, you know, he, he's a, he's you know you, it's, it's hard to keep man. that guy contained but you know but it, but you're right though gene is definitely you know a big celebrity in brazil and probably obviously because kiss is such a big band over in brazil when they will go yeah. over there they do they do very well so it, it should be interesting the, the summer breeze festival has been going on for for a while though it wasn't there isn't there also a summer breeze festival in europe too i think there's they have a they have a summer oh, breeze. We have, um, loads of, in Germany. we have lo loads of festivals. Yeah, yeah festivals. all those festivals yeah. are in Europe in the summer. And hard rock yeah. is so big still over here. So yeah, because I know that there's one. Track. I know there's one called Summer Breeze that's in Germany as well, right? That's and it, so sometimes they do like a lot of these, uh, like black metal bands and stuff the like that. The biggest one is the biggest one is Wacken. Yeah, Wacken. Yeah, Wacken. that's oh, yeah. That's a, yeah. One. That, that's a huge one there, right? Yeah. But yeah, but it's it, 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 it's interesting because. The, the they have it almost seems like they have Gene, jeans band on with sort of like the 80s sort of bands you know mr big and those <laughs> right. those, those bands yeah. like you know they don't have them have, have them with anything really current but i don't know what's who, who's no, playing on the other days but i don't think it really matters you if you recall in 94 when kiss went down there and had huge crowds it was black sabbath no one cared about black sabbath in 94. slayer no. was opening no one cared about slayer in 94 and no one cared about kiss over here either yeah. in europe and, and north america but back in south america they were still you know uh, pretty huge so, so yeah. i think it's a bit of different they walked to a different beat down there oh, oh that wasn't oh, me that wasn't me i thought we were gonna <laughs> make it you know I mean, the first five years, Halfway Mark, Mark, Mark almost, never barked no. on an episode during five or six years, but late, lately he can't help himself. Uh, it's a gas buildup there. So, okay. So. Okay. Something has happened. Uh, uh, yeah. 
<laughs> something. It's good. It's from some of the top. Way. Some of the topics get uh, get under my skin there a bit. So. Yeah, <laughs> some of the uh, other bands. It's not an '80s thing, Mark. And even though those kind of, you know, no, I mean that day. Yeah, yeah. Well, that day, there's Exodus is on there. Biohazard, Blackstone Cherry is not, you know. Not oh, okay. Bones. So it's so it is a mix. Okay. Of, yeah, it's 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 just a mix. It's just I think it's just the way it you know ended up. Mm-hmm. Um, I think you know they have a summer breeze. I think in Sweden they all have this uh, winter freeze festival. Yeah. Winter freeze. No. Nope. Okay. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> all right. No, we, we all come alive during the summer. You know, when you have a real cold winter, I mean, you really celebrate the summer. Yeah. I'm sure you do. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, the only other thing is uh, the rumor that. You know, it's still out there that that Kiss is still trying to sell their the brand. I think, mm-hmm. um, and that's why I think we're not going to get anything special other than those you know anniversary colored kind of vinyls and t shirts and and whatnot. Same so way. it's it's kind of a a bummer. Yeah. Sell it already. <laughs> We've been talking about this for a year. Yeah, they probably want, you know, Paul, probably Paul wants too much. Or maybe Gene. This army isn't getting any younger. Sell it already. We're we're ready to buy a product. Yeah, well, yeah. We'll be all gone by the time they get the sold. Endangered species, the Kiss Mm. Army. Yeah, Yeah, we're endangered. It's true. (laughs) I think it is true. All right. So um, now getting into our kind of topics of the week. um, We have one. The first one is a subject that uh, uh, Daniel brought up regarding uh, Kiss lyrics, and we don't you know, talk too much about Kiss lyrics, and maybe for obvious reasons. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, he wanted to uh, do the Kiss lyrics that uh, you know. There's Kiss, Kiss lyrics that feature a range of themes. That have contributed uh, to their, you know, enduring, enduring appeal. Um, so he want to pick a, We want to pick three of your favorite Kiss lyrics and explain why you like them. Do you want to elaborate on that, uh, Daniel? Since that was, no, your... I think you explained quite, quite well. No, it's just your favorite lyrics, right? Yeah, th- three of your favorite lyrics and. Uh, I'm pretty curious to see what you guys pick now, uh, because the earlier lyrics are pretty simplistic. I don't know if we'll yeah. get, you know, like Firehouse or Strutter. Uh, I, I was just, yeah, I was just gonna yeah. say that this this is yeah. this isn't exactly like high educated lyrics here. We're not we're not talking Dylan or Neil Peart or anything. We're talking we're talking like elementary school lyrics here in a lot of cases. So ouch, yeah. they're not real. They're not real <laughs> deep thinkers in their lyrics. No, <laughs> no, there's no deep. <laughs> Deep meaning or anything either. So. But I don't know, do you want deep meaning in a rock song? I, I'm not too sure. That, that depends. It depends. It depends. Self self empowerment, know. that kind of stuff works pretty well. Um, I can get, I, I can start with my my third from. Uh, so we're going number, three to number, one. Third yeah, three to yeah, one. I don't know if I have yeah. a favorite group or not. But anyway, yeah, go ahead. I don't, know if, ahead. I don't yeah. know if I have them ranked. Yeah. Number th- number Just three. Number three for me is actually pretty new when it comes to Kiss lyrics. It's from 1992, and it's about nice. standing up against uh, forces of evil, standing up mm. against uh, uh, religion, uh, and it's actually a pretty deep cut. But I always enjoy the lyrics to "Thou shalt not." I think it's mm. a really cool lyric very well written and um, a pretty cool message uh it's but on the one hand it's about self-empowerment on the other hand it's criticizing some of um what religion has done in in countries over the years so i think it's a pretty deep kiss lyric if if you compare to a lot of others like burn bitch burn or or <laughs> something like that so uh thou shalt not not is my number th- three Bronze metal okay. for me. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good one. I mean, <laughs> one of the you know different kind of uh, subject matter from Gene, other than his usual 
You know, it's yeah. not the usual subject. I'm not sure how much he wrote, but 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 it's a cool <clears throat> lyric. Right. Yeah. Right. All right. All uh, right. Lonnie, you want to go next? Yeah, I'll go next. With uh, one. My, mine's a Gene lyric also, um, but it's from 1982 from Creatures of the Night. Um, it's War Machine. I really oh, like. The, that's my number I one. Really, <laughs> that's is it one. really? Yeah. I really like the lyrics on War. I mean, I, I, War Machine is one of my top Kiss songs. I love the guitar riff. I love how dark and menacing it sounds. And the lyrics are so fitting and so good. Um they're just like a, a it's a fire you up type song and you know just just kind of something you, you you listen to and you're getting ready to 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 work out or go for a run or, or something like that just to get you fired up and you know and a, he, he, my brothers and I always talk about and it's kind of like a subject that my buddies and I talk about too is like okay well if you were a major league baseball player what song would you have when you came when you would come up the bat because every every baseball player has you know like their little theme song that they come up the bat with and nine times out of ten i say i come up the war machine so um it's it's, it's a great it's on to kind of you know kind of get your mind right and get you get you ready to go so that's that's i, I don't have them ranked like daniel does but the, that's one i had to throw in for sure all right I, yeah I like that's a good one Definitely a good one. Uh, Mark, how about you? Uh, well, my third, and I'm not, they're not really ranked, but they're sort of, I guess. Uh, number three for me is going to be a Paul Stanley one. Um, Paul, I find, kind of sticks in his lane as far as topics, I find. Mm -hmm. he, he, he either does the really, you know, yeah, 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 get up and, you know, empower yourself songs, or he does it the kind of you know, romantic kind of love song stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, but being that I'm such a huge fan of Asylum, I had to go with something off of that. And of course, Tears Are Falling, I think is one of his stronger lyrics on that. I mean, it is one of those more, you know, romantically based uh, uh, lyric, but I think it's such a strong uh, melody and the words work so well with his melody i think that's something that's pretty important i mean you can get one thing that people don't realize is that sometimes if you write really really like intelligent lyrics with big words it's hard to get them into a melody that flows properly you know if, if you have like a 10 syllable word try singing that it's not too easy right so sometimes to, to make it easier to sing you have to also kind of make it a bit more simplistic in its wording as well right i'm sure daniel being a teacher knows all about this sort of stuff with phrasing yeah. and stuff like that mark, as well right mark, mark real quick I, I think that's one of the reasons why kiss made it so big you know outside of america i mean when i was a kid i didn't have to you know think so hard in order to understand the lyrics but when i was yeah. listening to other stuff i really didn't get it because english wasn't my first language so i think that's a big part of kiss's success yeah that that is true because you know the some of the words are probably more universally recognized or understood easier than some of the other words, right? And the, and I find that Kiss also wasn't too big on using slang terms. I mean, I, I know that that's sort of more popular within the rap genre and stuff like that, where they use slang terminology, but Kiss seemed to use like more, you know, sim simplistic is probably a harsh word, but more easier to understand uh, wording and I think, like Daniel said, I think that helped because it also it also makes it easier for people to follow along. Hence, why they probably had such a good, strong young younger fan base as well. So younger kids didn't have to think too much about it either, right? But Tears Are Falling, I think, is a is a is a great example of that. I think it's it it gets to the point. You know what he's talking about is you know heartbreak and stuff like that, and. Uh, just the way that he phrases the words within the song and the melody, I think, is very strong. A very, very good Paul Stanley lyric. That's a good one. Another good one. Um, all right. Um, what about you, Ken? Uh, Gene song, probably. Yeah. Yeah, you won't be <laughs> no, surprised. No, really. You won't. You won't be surprised. I, I was gonna say if it's right. If, if, if it was, if I was like uh, eighteen or less, I probably would pick you know "Take Me" by Paul Stanley or something. But anyway, uh, I'm not. I'm not that There's nothing wrong with that either. There's nothing wrong. With that. Um, <laughs> but uh, uh, all right, yeah. One is my first. I guess you can say Gene song <laughs> um, is uh, 
and on the eighth day. Oh, um, Lord. That one. Wow. <laughs> I didn't okay. see that one Expl coming. Explain this one. <laughs> Tough. That is kind of nice religious, kind of religious, like thou shalt not, you know, the uh, Daniel thing here. It's, yeah. But it's on the, and on the eighth day, no, God created rock and roll. I, I just remember it. I was like, yeah, you know, when, when that came out, I was like, that's so cool, you know. It's like, oh, that's a good idea, you know. God created because that the, the importance of rock and roll, it kind of puts a lot of importance on that, you know, that yeah. in in God's eyes, you know. So so that's why He created it, and and it's kind of like an uplifting kind of song too, and that's more the ones I kind of chose or something like that, you know. About you know, pick up your guitar, and it's all it's all rock and roll kind of thing. Just I just. I just like, and there's nothing special about otherwise about the, the lyrics, you know, it's a lot of, and God created rock and roll, um, you know, call of the wild. I mean, I think a lot of it is, is was written by Vinny, the lyrics probably, yeah. um, yeah. cause he wrote the, you know, a lot of the music too on that. And they switched it up a little, it's a little bit of Gene and Vinny, I think on the lyrics. So yeah, I mean, I just thought, I just remember it's like, yeah, God created rock and roll. That's it, you know, on the eighth day. And there's a seventh day, but what happened on the eighth day? Well, he created rock and roll. So I thought and that was kind of cool. That's very important to make a note of that because for all you musical lovers out there, especially this goes out to all you jazz heads which, who, who get on my nerves. They, they, they don't have a song about on the eighth day, God created jazz. Okay. So that just shows how unimportant <laughs> jazz is in the world. Okay. Wow. Too. Wow. It's a shot at jazz. I mean, I mean, shot at jazz from Mark. <laughs> things we never knew about Mark. Good Lord. Mark, you have no jazz have, albums in your collection. Do you? Yes, None. Real quick. Real, real quick. Don't I have to give a shout. Saxophones in front of Mark. Three. I have to give a shout out to jazz. You know, when I'm reading, I, I like uh, dark, you know, crime novels, um, like film noir. But but when it comes to novels, I like th those type of novels. And I always put on in my headphones jazz, I, no, film noir, no. and then I listen to jazz while I'm reading. No. You know, slow dark jazz is pretty pretty awesome. Daniel, Daniel. Mark, you need to you need to give it another shot. Daniel, let, let me let me tell you something. Jazz music, when I hear jazz, I envision old men with pipes sitting in front of a fireplace with those big oh. fluffy like there's bath robes kind, on. There's different yeah. kind wow. of jazz, you know. Very very it's very old there are different kinds. music. Why okay? do you hate the olds, Mark? Good lord. The old people, yeah. you know. <laughs> We're <laughs> all old the people. We're all so old people. Uh, but but you need to go Mark, you, you, you go to Spotify this evening and then you put in film noir and then you, you pick a playlist and then you pick your favorite novel and then you read to that music. I mean, it's awesome. I mean, I mean, yeah. it's, Mark, it's you need to expand your, your horizons. Uh, listen, I, let, me, let, let me let me tell you I'm something, Lonnie. Okay. Let me tell you something, okay? I when I joined the vinyl community, tell me okay, Come on. Uh, <laughs> I I went in full force into jazz. I bought Grand Green Records, Art Blakey Records, and all that. And then I come to realize that I'm starting to feel gray hair come on to me when I'm listening to this music, okay? So I I ditched all my Grand Green and all that. I kept one Art Blakey record because I don't mind him. He's a good drummer, right? But I don't know. I just it doesn't connect with me. I just find it. I just it's just not my type of music. It's just I don't know. Well, why are we talking okay. about jazz well, anyway? Well, this yeah. isn't a jazz podcast, so yeah. Um, Imagine kiss the jazz. Yeah. Let's keep going. Um, <laughs> yeah, jazz. Detroit jazz. City jazz style. Maybe they could do that. I know they've done some other styles like that before, but uh, all right, Daniel, get us yeah. into your number your next two. Song. Number two. Well, some. I think it was, uh, was it, I don't remember who mentioned Vinnie Vincent, but I think mm. Vinnie Vincent is a big part of the best Kiss lyrics. I mean, he's such a great lyricist. And um, my second pick comes from the era that's probably my favorite era when it comes to the Sonics. I love the albums that came out during this era and I love the way they sounded live and I'm, I have to go back to the revenge era so to speak once again 92 to 95 and when I first heard this song it was so menacing and I think it deals with um, um, you know the way I mean you have a dark and a light side everyone has that and and this song is about 
when the darkness takes over what you're what you can do uh, when you mm. you let the dark side take over your mind and it's actually unholy Star Wars. from revenge yeah <laughs> yeah it's the fight between light <laughs> and darkness you know evil and good mm -hmm. and i if you look at at the lyrics to unholy i don't think gene had a lot to do with those lyrics no. because it's uh, way better than he he is able mm -hmm. to to write and i think those lyrics are some of the best kiss lyrics i mean it's if you're into it's really dark i mean you send your children to war and to serve bastards and whores mm -hmm. and, and that kind of stuff uh but I really like those lyrics and I like the song as well. And li like Mark said, if you like the song you, 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 with Tears Are Falling, I mean, the lyrics really can't come alive. And, uh, but you can go through the lyrics to Unholy. I, I can't see uh, oh, yeah. a lot of other ba uh, songs that top that lyrics. I was there through the ages, chained slaves to the cages. I'm suicide and salvation, the omen to nation. I mean, just the, the, the words are so, so much better than the usual Gene song. That if you go back to the previous record, like "Hot in the Shade," there's no song oh. in, in in the realm of Unholy. So, Unholy is my number two pick. Okay, yeah, that's a good one. Um, yeah, it's it's on the darker side, and it and it kind of fit the times of the music at that time too. I think mm. so. Okay, Lani, well, number two. I'm just going to piggyback off of Daniel because Unholy was the next one I was going to go with also. Ah, okay. I mean, no, no surprises. I'm going to take a revenge song off of when we're talking, you know, favorite tracks and favorite lyrics it's and that. But I think I think it's fan I think it's might be fair to say that, that Vinny Vincent might be our favorite <laughs> lyricist. I mean, we're all talking yeah, about look, yeah. look it up, creatures, look it up, creatures, True. and revenge songs here. Um, <laughs> I think... You know, for the most part, anyway, we're, we're talking about those songs. I know Mark talked about Tears Are Falling, which is great, too. But I think it's interesting that that, that that's yeah. kind of the direction that this off-the-cuff conversation has, has taken. Um, without really, we, we, we have to discuss this prior to, to coming on today. We said we we're going to do this, but we didn't really go into detail oh. with each other in the conversation prior to mm -mm. recording this. So. Um, I think that's that's kind of interesting, and it'll be interesting to see um, how the listeners feel about their um, favorite lyrics. But but I'm, I'm I'm with Unholy also with Daniel. I mean, it's menacing and just it, it's unlike almost anything Kiss has ever written. True, it's, it's so it's so different from it's so different from just even the rest of the songs on that album. The, the lyrics are so dark, and you're talking about what was this, you know really popular at the time too. You think about like what Metallica was doing and what Megadeth and yeah. bands like that were doing at the time too. It just fits into the mold. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, even though I lay you down to sleep your soul to keep me, Metallica did yeah, that with Inner Sandman too. Yeah. I mean, it's, yeah. I, mean, it, I mean, obviously yeah. piggybacked off of that for sure. But, um, but that, that, that's, that's where music was. It was very, very, you know, it was very dark and very heavy at the time. And that was Kiss's answer to it. And, and it's, and it was a perfect answer. So. Unholy. All right. Yeah. Good, agree, agree. Uh, Mark, your next one. You know, the, the interesting thing is that I I did a like two for each one, just in case there was people who did the same ones, so we didn't have to do sure. it. That this would have been three in a row because I also originally had unholy wow. as my number two. No. But this 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 also uh, talks about an interesting point that Lonnie brought up is that uh, as much as we always kind of quibble about Vinnie Vincent and make little comments about him. He, 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 it does seem to be that he's probably the strongest lyric writer that Kiss had for, for a lot of this stuff. I mean, a lot of the yeah. songs that we seem to remember and refer to are stuff that he had a very strong input on, you know? And it's it, it just goes to show that we, we can say what we want about Vinny when it comes to several different things, but... When it comes to his songwriting, there's no question that he's a, extremely talented and has a lot of things to offer. So that's that's mm -hmm. an interesting thing. But my number two that I'm going to pick is uh, Creatures of the Night. I, I think that that's another Ooh. one of these lyrics that are very descriptive. Uh, again, what we were talking about mood. And when you think of the title alone, Creatures of the Night, the lyrics that are within the song, 
are very much complementary to that title, you know, searching in the darkness, hiding from the, you know, all, all that, mm -hmm. all those sort of imagery that he talks about in there. Uh, again, this is one of those songs I think uh, he, he had to, he, I forget who that co writer, writer guy was with uh, Mitch, Mitch, uh, Why I is forget it? the. No, but not him. There was another guy. Oh, the other one. Uh, the other yeah, guy okay. that wrote with him. But anyways, the guy that co-wrote with him, uh, I'm wondering how much input he had on the lyrics too, because when you when you look at it, it, it's Paul can get dark if he wants to, but I sometimes wonder how much input the other guy had in the lyrics of this as well. But it does, that doesn't matter. The, the fact is I think it's a good lyric. It's very strong. Uh, the imagery is there when you close your eyes and you listen to the lyrics and concentrate on them. You can kind of see in your mind what he's talking about. And again, Paul's great at taking some of these sorts of lyrics and fashioning a good, strong melody around them. One that you can remember and, you know, sing along with with greatest of ease. While this one is probably a little bit more uh, complicated as far as lyric uh, wording. I mean, I don't know how many people who don't speak English would understand it completely, but it's still a, a great song. And I think that people will probably love it just as much for the lyrics, as much as the music. Yep. That was a, a unique uh, song for Paul, really. Mm -hmm. You know, that was a, a little lot different from what he was writing before that. Um, so yeah, yeah and the, the lyric content and the song itself, was different sounding than your normal Paul kind of staying in his lane. That's where he kind of didn't stay in his lane on that song. So, yeah, yeah. that's a real good song. That was a really, you know, yeah, and it has great lyrics in it too. So, cool. That's a good one. Um, all right. So, my second one, <laughs> Gene Simmons song. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, no. uh, it's trial by fire. <laughs> it's trial by fire. And it's kind of nice. one of those uplifting, you know, go for, you know, go for it kind of songs, you know, you know, uh, only got one life to live, mm -hmm. you know, um, I like that. gotta live it. Oh, yeah. yeah. Nothing can stop me, you know, just, you know, I'm just yeah. going to go for it and do what I want and, you know, mm -hmm. give it my all kind of thing. Um, even though people, you know, they, they say, you know, you, you, you can't do it. No, I'm going to go ahead and, you know, I'm going to do it, you know? So yeah, it's kind of a, that kind of song, you know, going for your dreams or whatever you want to do, you know, just don't listen to other people, just, you know, go for it and, and, and try to do, you know, do your best. And so that, that's a, you know, that's a kind of a, the kind of songs I like, you know, um, you know, live my life, you know, my way, that sort of stuff, you know, you don't, you know, you can, have your view on something but you know that's fine but i'm gonna do it the way i want to do it and that's it so that's the gene simmons you know and he doesn't do a lot of those types of songs um uh you know really uh in the lyrics you know it's <laughs> more a, more about you know women and stuff so um that that was a, a unique one for him at least on asylum but that's a, that was a good song so that's my second song. Nice. Cool. That's a good one. Second from Asylum. Oh, yeah, true. We have a couple down there. All right. So, um, all right, Daniel, the last, your last song. Yeah, we'll see if any song from the 70s makes, makes it onto this. <laughs> I don't list. think. We only have know. 80s and 90s song, that's, songs. That's pretty cool. I didn't see that one coming. But uh, um, I have to go with War Machine, even though it's been mentioned previously, because War Machine mm. is my favorite uh lyrics by by far actually because when i listen to that one it's about i, I I'm, I'm thinking about work you know taking uh, taking over <laughs> you you know your colleagues or your boss it doesn't really work but this it doesn't really work but somehow if you want it real bad you can take over and you can do it yourself and make it every everything work you know uh like there's some lines here that's pretty cool like uh take the reins of power and seize them you know mm -hmm. uh, and that sort of stuff you know take over and of course the title is so iconic um i remember watching that metallica documentary back in the uh, i guess late 2000s uh, mm -hmm. you know, 
what was it called? Some kind Some of kind monster. Of monster. Yeah. Monster, yeah. I really, yeah, I really yeah. like that documentary. And, and then they, they are discussing what the, 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 the album is supposed to be called. And, and Lars, the drummer, says um, frantic. That's not really cool. And then they, they say Saint Anger. Yeah, that's so iconic. And War Machine <laughs> is such is such an uh, iconic, you know, phrasing, such an uh, iconic song title. And that's probably why Julian has mentioned War Machine as being the title of his next book project, because it's such oh, a, yeah. <laughs> a, an iconic, you know, word. And and uh, Lonnie mentioned earlier that in um, if it was baseball or NFL, I, I really don't know which sport it was. They come out mm -hmm. to a song, and you know, uh, in hockey, <laughs> a sport for real man, you go out to song. Wow! And, and then you, there's <laughs> a classic one. There's a Swedish player that played in Detroit Red Wings <clears throat> for almost 20 years. It was called Thomas Holmstrom. <clears throat> Thomas Holmstrom, and he was. Uh, Pretty close. He's not too far away from me where, where he started off his, his career. And he always went out to War Machine. And it's such a perfect song, as uh, you, um, Lonnie mentioned earlier. So War Machine is my favorite. Hmm. You know, do you remember, uh, Daniel, when yeah. uh, they, in hockey, they didn't used to wear helmets back yeah. then? I, yeah. I remember watching those games when I was young. When they didn't wear helmets, man, they got banged up. That's crazy. <laughs> that, that, that was yeah, crazy. That's unbelievable. They're out there. Yeah. Now they the have to, you know, it's, they have the to. Let, the, let, the, yeah. the, morning, yeah. the last player that played without a helmet was Craig McTavish in New York Rangers. And he played. Oh, I remember that guy. Yeah. In the late 90s, I think, or in the mid 90s, yeah. at least. <laughs> that, that he was grandfathered in. Every, he didn't have to wear a helmet. Yeah. Yeah. There was some <laughs> yeah. sort of stuff. Yeah. That, so everyone was wearing helmets. Helmets with except him, he was there with him. Yeah, Peter, what, what, he had some pretty good hair going on there, so it was pretty cool. But what's funny about that is if you if you look even further back though, there was a time period where goldies didn't wear masks either back in the early, early starts. <laughs> just, too. Yeah, that's that's, just that's almost so wild. Yeah, yeah. Whoa. <laughs> yeah. There was yeah, a lot those, of those missing pucks. teeth then and stuff. That. Yeah, those pucks, man. Yeah. They're, yeah. they're hard and heavy. So anyway, yeah. <laughs> those side side there. All right, Lonnie, what's your second or third? Sorry. Uh, uh, I'm going to break the mold and I'm going to go oh. with a 70s song. Uh, oh, okay. oh, there we go. I'm going to go with Come On and Love Me. I think the of lyrics course. on that okay. are so, of course. But I think the lyrics on that are so catchy um, and just they're, I, they're, they're so, it's, it's to me, Come On and Love Me is just the most classic kiss song of them all. Um, it's catchy, it's fun. You know, it 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 is it is that it, it it's it's it is the most iconic not most iconic kiss song, but it's just like it's kiss personified in the one song. It's come on, love me. The, the lyrics are about a girl, and it's fun, and you know, it's what kiss is all about. So, um, you know, Paul, 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 I read an interview with, um, and Paul said it. There, there's some of his favorite lyrics too. Or is the second they asked Paul like, what is? I forget where I read this, but. They said, "What are your what's the favorite lyric you wrote?" Because it's the second verse of "Come on and love me." So mm -hmm. you know, you were distant okay. at your mirror. I can mirror. I can see your face inside the mirror. It's, oh, yeah, he, yeah. He, he, he said, I, "He said I couldn't write a yeah. song like that." There it comes, and he goes, "He couldn't write a song like that today if I tried." So yeah, I, I, I see love, your I face in that. the mirror. Yeah, that was a a, a different line. Yeah. Uh, so, Kind of surprising i remember hearing that for the first time I was like, what did he say <laughs> it's like oh okay interesting I had, look th I had to look that one up you know i'm a cancer well capricorn stuff cancer. from from, yeah. from, from from kiss lyrics yeah yeah so oh yeah that's a good one yeah um all right who's next mark yeah well i gotta say it's it's good that lonnie brought up a 70s song because didn't look like there was going to be any representation there, but yeah, and 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 he's right though. That that's definitely a, a extremely strong lyric for how they were writing in the seventies. Definitely a lot more uh, thought put into that than just you know 
come on, baby, let's get in the bed kind of stuff. So yeah, it, it's much. It's it's a lot further removed from from room service earlier. Yeah, yeah. you know what I mean. Ex exactly. That's exactly what I was hinting <laughs> at. Room <there>. service. <laughs> so yeah. So my 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 last one is going to be a, a three for three Paul Stanley selection here, uh, uh -huh. and again we kind of hinted at the kind of different types of lyrics that Paul likes to do. This one is a prime example of the rah, 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 but, you know, you can take over the world sort of lyrics. And yeah. that's the opener to Asylum, which is King of the Mountain, which is definitely mm -hmm. a song that, you know, can can encourage and motivate the most, you know, down and depressed kid. You let, you let him hear this song and he'll make him believe that he can, you know, climb a mountain for sure. And it, it, this is the kind of song where you can even envision, you know, in a Rocky movie, like, you know, when he was climbing the mountain in Rocky four, you know, yeah. you could imagine hearing yeah. him singing, having that music in the background when he's doing that big climb up there. Right. Uh, so yeah, they would, they, they were always kind of good with that. I, I think Paul once said himself that he's not into politics and stuff like that, but he's definitely into motivation and stuff like that. And, you know, it, it's very evident here. Uh, that he's he knows what he's talking about when it comes to this sort of topic, and uh, it's always been one of my favorites. I've I've mentioned it many times in the podcast before that I've I've always loved this song from the opening drum fills that Eric Carr starts with to the guitar solo that Bruce Kulick does. I think this is probably one of Kiss's best opening tracks on a on a record that they've done for sure. So and and it, it definitely has a good set of strong lyrics in there as well. So. Uh, that's that's my number one pick actually for lyrics. That's good. No, that's a good one. I like that one too. So, yeah, agreed. Uh, um, okay, well then, <laughs> my last song, and actually, you know, it's it's kind of a Gene song, but I think Lou Reed had more, maybe mm -hmm. more. Uh, mm -hmm. Only you. Credit in the uh, writing of the lyrics. Well, a world without heroes. Well, well, yeah. I think it's 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 Gene, definitely a little bit there, of course, and I think Lou Reed uh, co-wrote on this one too. Um, I have to go back and look at some of the history of this song, but I think it was Lou Reed. Um, so yeah, the world without heroes. I mean, everyone here is, you know, whether they're uh, you're you know you're your parents, your father, or whatever, you know, the heroes, or, or, like, uh, you know, kiss to a degree, and he, was it, you know, my heroes when I was young, when I first got into them, it's like, you know, they were, they were there, they were like larger than life, you know, when you first got to see, you know, see them, and it's like there's these comic book kind of heroes coming to life and stuff like that, you know, and, and uh, other other kinds of heroes so yeah it's i think it's uh everyone's got to have some kind of hero something to strive for um you know there's some heroes that turn out to be not so heroic um that you find out later <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> which you know no one's perfect but uh but it's always good to have a hero something to strive for you know the the good points and people uh and uh if they lead you the right way in life, you know, uh, the right direction, um, you know, like Daniel with you know, good versus evil kind of thing. You know, I always felt the good versus evil kind of thing. You know, the the cowboy movies heroes with the, you know, John Wayne. You know, the, guy, the always the the cowboy wearing the white hat versus the black hat. You know, the white hat was the good yeah. guy, yeah. right? And the black hat was the, you know <laughs> that sort of thing. So um, yeah, I always went for the good. Um, you know, for the most part. So, yeah, that that song is kind of a, a, a touching kind of song that I always liked um, from the elder. So, what about cowboy movies? What's your favorite cowboy movies movie? <clears throat> that's that's difficult. I mean, there's a lot of you know certain John Wayne good movies. Ones. Because you know, when I was a kid, John Wayne was it for me. You know, it was, yeah. you know so it was John Wayne. But you know, I like the, some of the newer stuff, like Tombstone. I think yeah, is a fantastic movie. Um, you know, yeah, there's a lot of great, great ones out there. Yeah, you know, Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid yeah, is one great. of my all-time favorite movies. 
really is. Oh, Redford, all and, uh, yeah. I saw that in the theater when I was a kid, like two times. Oh, you know, uh, that's cool. When it was out, so that I was. I remember after that movie, me and my friend, we. <laughs> this is like a side thing, but I, we, we pretended uh, one of us was Butch Cassidy, the other guy was a Sundance kid. We had our. <laughs> We had our, you know, the holsters with the guns and everything, yeah. and our, and our cowboy nice. hats. Yeah. I think I was Butch Cassidy, and he was the Sundance Kid. Yeah, yeah. So, we play a lot of cowboys guy. and Indians over here as well. With it, with yeah. My, my favorite it's, cowboy movie. It's really not a cowboy movie, but it's uh, during that era. Um, Dances with Wolves. I think. It's oh, a wonderful that's movie. Right, yeah. movie. Fantastic. Be beautiful mu music. Beautiful Music's score, great. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. One of my all-time favorite movies. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. and not to keep going off on it, but the uh, I guess Kevin Costner has some uh, new western coming to the yeah. theater, two-parter this summer. You know, one mm -hmm. in first part in June, and second part in August. So it's going to be okay, kind of really. some epic thing going on here. Have to so. check that one wow. out. Hopefully, it's as good as you know, Dances with the Wolves. That, mm -hmm. but that'd be very difficult, I think. But yeah. anyway. All right, so we made it through the those the list of uh, our lyrics, and you know, yeah, I, I'm sure if Julian our Julian was here, he'd pick Deuce, uh, but <laughs> I never right. got that lyric. <laughs> I never got what it was. Your man, you're working hard. He's worth a Deuce, you know, it's a <sighs> kind of thing. You know, a Deuce isn't that when you're dropping number two? That's what well, I always thought. Well, you can. <laughs> that's a, that's you know, a slang for it, yeah. There's yeah. Yeah, or when yeah. or or it's a part of of New York, you know, in in, in uh, the square of New there's York. There's a deuce, deuce, or you know, it's two. Or, you know, or the number two. It could be the number, you know, the, the card number two. Call it a deuce. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, there's a lot of things you can. You know. Never got it. I'll deuce, but uh, anyway, all right. Um, He's dropping a deuce. <laughs> do, 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 do. All right, none of that. <laughs> None of that. Get out of the gutter. All right. After, all right. So after reading Julian's review of, uh, you know, Julian did a great review. And if you haven't seen it, you know, mm -hmm. guys out there yeah. uh, on the board of, the, you know, Ace's album, he got a, you know, preview uh, or a promo version of uh, 10,000 Volts, Ace's new album. So he reviewed that and, you know, you know, quite a good review there so check that out if you haven't but after i'm sure all of us have read that i hope all of us have uh, read it was that. pretty long <laughs> yeah, yeah. It well it's too long you know but uh, extensive yeah i mean are you more excited or not uh, after reading you know julian's words I'm more. I, I'm wondering how he got a hold of the the record. That's my main point. How, well, he's special. How, how he he's special. Well, he's more important than us. So well, no, That's Julian. No, 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 no. Julian's a known writer now, and, and I think he's done enough uh, stuff in other albums, including other Ace, Ace records. That uh, there comes a point where you're going to start getting advanced. Uh, I mean, and and yeah. I and I I do the I do the Yes podcast, and yeah. because we've done it for so long, now we get advanced copies of the Yes albums when they yeah. before they come out. So be nice. it's, a, it's one of However, those things that happens, right? I, th I think I think there's a problem when you you know get a bit you you get promotional copies and that sort of stuff. People are expecting you to hail the album. You know, mm -hmm. it, it's the best. Album. They're hoping. I'm, I, I think it's hard to be critical when, when you get a you know a, the, an advanced copy. You f kind of feel I have to praise this one. So. Uh, these kind of review views, even though I know Julian is uh, a true Kiss fan, uh, I have to wait and listen. You don't think myself. he's honest uh, in I, his uh, I'll not, view? I have to wait and <laughs> wow. listen by myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah but, but don't you agree? You know, that's the problem. That was the problem with three sides. You know, it was such a great, well. cool podcast. Then they became friends with Eric Singer. And to some extent, Tom Thayer, and suddenly they start to praise everything. I mean, it's a problem when you when you get famous. But the, but that but, but honestly, Daniel, it it, yeah. it depends on the kind of person you are. I mean, yeah, we, got the, we, we got the we got the yes stuff, and we that well we got the quest, and we never gave that a, a five out of five. We said that there was lots of stuff on that that we didn't like either. All right, mm -hmm. and, and let's put it this way: if you're you a band, won't get the next. No, we did. We, we, we did. Because the, the thing is, I, I think that a lot of times 
if you go in, look, if you're going to go in there and say, this album is completely shit, then of course they're not going to give you anything. But if you go in and say, listen, I, I, the, the record was good. I like this and that, but I didn't like this. I think this could be improved on. I still think that this is not strong. Then, you know, most bands, I think if they're, if they're, you know, been in this business long enough, know that you're not going to satisfy everybody. And you have to at least go in with the frame of mind that, you know, there's going to be some people that don't like it. And that doesn't mean that, you know, they're necessarily wrong about their points. You know, you just have to take it either as, you know, criticism, a creative criticism or constructive criticism. Constructive, yeah. Yeah, or 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 if you're if you're that offended about it, then if you post then, then don't do it. Then don't send out things, well, yeah. you know. Well, then they'll take a good comment sometimes well, and turn it into bad. And, and, and let me put it, it, so but, <laughs> but let me just put this this way my point on it. I read it all. I read it all pretty oh what happened to Lonnie? Uh -oh. uh, well, hopefully he comes back. Uh, I I did uh, read his review in in full, and you know I I don't necessarily think that he has a gun to his head to say all nice things about it, uh, but it is possible yeah. that this record is better than he expected, and I think that that though kind of lies in another area though because now the, after reading Julian's review, there's a lot of people involved in this record besides Ace. A lot of people, you know, you yeah. have the trickster guys, you have mm -hmm. like two other songwriters there as well. There's like four different drummers that are on this album. Yeah. So yeah. Th this album had a lot yeah. of help and it had well, a lot of yeah. uh, p pressure to make it because he said, and this is his fault partially, Ace, that he said, This is my best record since 78. Ah. So, yeah, of course, right. he, but after saying that, you're gonna have pretty to make sure impression. that that record delivers yeah. that way. Yeah, ah, that's a pretty good impression. But, but I think, yeah, uh, <laughs> you know, um, Ace need he needs some help. Uh, so I think it's good that he's been taken care of. And I'm I'm I've gotten my hopes up, and I really like the first single. I think it's a pretty cool song. But the thing I'm most ecstatic about is that he's brought. Anton Fig back into the mold, you know, mm. bringing him back to the band playing. I mean, he, he recorded the, the 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 tracks, and then he felt, well, it's not a ten out of ten. I need Anton, and then he brought him back. And I think, mm -hmm. much as Ace, Anton is one of my favorite drummers. I mean, what he yeah, did, a good drummer. Unmasked and and and, uh, mm -hmm. and Dynasty, I think, is pretty pretty cool. And you know, Breakout and that kind of stuff. There's a real cool live video of. Them playing Breakout, I think, in, in the early 90s or late 80s with, with Anton Fig on drums. I think it's a part of a drum instructional video uh, at mm -hmm. the time. And it's really rocking, and you can see yeah. the talents of Anton Fig. So I think that's pretty cool that Ace, you know, he knows that Anton Fig suits his sound. Mm -hmm. So we brought him in. And so they put it, he put, it seems like he put in the effort this time around. So I think this album will be a good album. I think it will surpass yeah. many of. Of of the, his later albums, so yeah, I'm, I, I've got my hopes up a bit. Yeah, I mean, after reading the reading it, I was like, oh, okay, that sounds like it's maybe almost up to the standard of you know, uh, was it Trouble Walking? You know, yeah, that's uh, a good album, uh, which is a good album. So if you can get close to that one, you know, or even close like the, to the seventy eight uh, album, uh, I'll be I'll be, you know, pretty happy, um, especially if it's better than the last couple. Uh, I think it would be, you know, the last one was that. The one before that, I like. I like Space Man, but you know, whatever. I um, Space Man was pretty good. Yeah, yeah, or Space Invader, whatever it was. Did um, you see the live rendition of uh, his latest single? I did see the ten thousand volts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was okay. Well, you know, it's kind of. Uh, <laughs> Daniel's I mean, convinced. it's recorded, you know, on the, the camera and stuff like that. I mean, I think it worked yeah. okay. Um, and Lonnie's yeah. gone again. Um, his, his, he has bad connections. Yeah, was, yeah. His, his video was getting a bit... Something going on there with his... Yeah. I was just going to ask him to... Uh, I, I think his wife is probably fault. playing on in the internet or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Netflix once again, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, anyway, uh, we'll see what happens with Ace's album. I mean, I'm sure we all are going to you know, have ordered it or are going to get it, you know, check it out. So, yeah, well, there are, to, yeah, sorry, go on, Daniel. 
I think it's just so cool that he managed to release this amount of albums this late in his career. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's, I, it, I, I it is actually this, surprising. You know, you know really. after travel walking, how many years was there until the, he released something? It was a lot of years, decades. Yeah. And then suddenly the floodgates opened. Once but he got uh, whatever he releases, I think it's a cool thing that he released something. Yeah. Once he so yeah, cool. got you know uh, off the booze or whatever. Ever since then, he's been releasing albums. Okay. Really, right? It's been about I think it's around the same time when he 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 stopped you know drinking, and they yeah. then he started releasing a whole bunch of stuff. So his focus was you know on but, music, more on music and and stuff, can, stuff which is good. Can, Ken, what, what do you think about this type of cycle he does? He, release, he releases a studio album and then I don't, he releases I know what you're uh, a cover album. Origins, yeah, I, yeah, I really... Yeah. The, Origins one time was enough. That was enough for me. I I, I think he's supposed to do an Origins 3, I, yeah. from what I think I, he That's said in the interview. Album. I'm like, oh, gosh, not a, you know... I'd rather have you know new material, original material. But you're forgetting something, though. It could be he could be under contract to do it. Though. Oh yeah, he is under contract yeah. to do that. That's the that's the thing. But Mark, um, Mark, you as an artist, what do you think about that idea? Releasing an original original album and then releasing a cover album, uh, and then you know. Going back I, I, to I don't like the idea. Around. I don't like the idea of doing it that way because it loses its kind of specialness to it you know what i mean like if you do a record and then all of a sudden you say i'm doing a record of just cover songs and people are like oh that's cool you know let's see what he likes but if you keep doing it all the time then people are like oh god this again it's better to like you know do a couple of records and then maybe later do it like maybe be like after you did another three or four studio records then do it or do something different like you know I, not to say that Ace would ever do this, but just as an example, like, you know, do do some Kiss songs or uh, Ace songs with an orchestra. Like, do something different, like, unexpected. You know what I mean? Well, here's just something. Here's something think, for you, Mark. I think you'd like a, an Ace jazz album. <laughs> that's, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's a good one, Ken. <laughs> I mean, yeah. actually, you know, you could do that. Yeah, there's there's guitar, guitar jazz albums. Um, oh, yeah, there are. Yeah. I, you know, quite honestly, Mark, I think... I would have loved him to do a, a, a total that type of album, instrumental album from beginning to end. I think it would be very cool to see what he can do with that. I I would love something like that. I wish he would have done that a long time ago. Well, Escape from the Island is an example of him doing something instrumentally, and he I'm sure he could do it. You know, lead he look has. at it this way. Lead lead guitar playing is a strong suit, right? So if that's yeah. the thing that he could do instrumental records, right? He does them on every uh, an mean, instrumental song. And we better every, get Lonnie's yeah. opinion on this before you know, before gets, Lonnie disappears yeah, again. Yeah. again. My internet likes to cut out on what's, Saturdays. What's what your you thoughts know? on the the? the uh, Ace are you album. excited for the Ace album now? With the I am excited for it. You know, I I, I you know I was listening to what you guys were saying about um, well, you know, Julian gets the advanced copy of this and that, and <laughs> I I understand that. I understand that to a certain extent too. Um, but I am excited about it. You know, I've I've heard nothing but good things about it. Um, going back to when uh, Mitch Mitch Lafon was um, hyping it up a couple months ago, and you know, I've heard I've heard nothing but good reviews about it. So I mean, I I think Space Man was was a decent one. I think Anomaly is is, is the best one that he's put out post post reunion, post Kiss reunion, in my mm -hmm. opinion. But. Um, I hope that it's up there with that, or, or even better. Um, yeah. If if it's not, I think that it's going to be a letdown because all we all we've heard about are positive things and how great this is, and Gene yeah. and Paul are going to look like imbeciles when this album comes out. So, um, <laughs> if it's not good, and if it, if it, if it, it you know, it, it, I think people are going to be like, okay, um, what what are we doing here? So. <laughs> Um, I, I hope I really hope it lives up to the hype. I'm excited about it, and I hope it lives up to the hype because it's received a lot of it. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Did you see the live rendition of, of, of the latest the single? I haven't seen that yet. No. Okay, don't okay. watch it. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> it's not that bad. It's okay. It's pretty bad. Um, all right, so I think we got time for this one last thing here. Okay. Uh, I have a 
a couple, uh, one to two trivia questions if you want here. Okay. Um, let's see if you guys get this one here. Um, here we go. Uh, on their 1995 tour of Japan, Kiss donated part of their earnings yeah. to what charity? Mm. Well, yeah. it was the one that had to do with the earthquake. Uh, what the hell what is what is the name of it i don't know i know that's the thing right yeah yeah you're on the right track do you know the name it was a yeah no but they, i couldn't they, remember they the recorded they recorded uh, a song and then the proceeds went to the charity but the name yeah. of the charity i mean that's yeah, way too pay, yeah deep. It was, uh, yeah, I thought that was kind of, but anyway, that was the, uh, shake your foundation, the victims of the Kobe earthquake. Yeah, so K O B E. Mm. I think oh, okay, it's yeah. pronounced okay, Kobe. Like that. I remember that now. Yeah. 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 So, all it's right. A real cool rendition of, I think it was Strutter, wasn't it? Yeah, it was Strutter. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's yeah, online. If you want to go and listen to it, cool rendition by with Bruce and Eric. Okay. We'll do, we'll do one more, uh, Okay, which legendary English heavy metal band opened for Kiss on their 1994 South American tour? English? No, Slayer opened and Black Sabbath. Black Sabbath, you mean? Aha. Black Sabbath, yeah. There, there you go. go. All right. There. Yeah. Very good, Daniel. Daniel's yeah. on. That's right. Daniel's on it today. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. 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 So, anyway, that was just a couple. <laughs> <laughs> Bring another one, Ken. This was fun. You want one more? Yeah, okay. one more. One more. Let's Let's do one more since we're uh, reaching the, uh, the, the threshold the, 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 the of, cutoff. of Daniel's, uh, of Julian's recording a length um, yeah. guide or whatever. Um, <laughs> all right, here's uh, uh, this might be too easy. You see, uh, where did uh, okay, where. Where did the, oh, you'll know that one too. Well, it's a little bit more <laughs> descriptive. About it. Where where did the first ever official KISS convention take place? Ooh, that was in Australia, but Australia. Is it Sydney, Melbourne. Uh, Melbourne, yeah, I think. It was, yeah, it was, uh, and actually not Melbourne. Think of another and place. And you say, I think place. you pronounce it Melbourne. You don't Melbourne, do the Melbourne. Melbourne. Or, um, not not the American. Adelaide. Mm, give us the first letter. P. 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 First. P. There first. you go. Ah, uh -huh. All right. it. Good one. Really, Perth? That's interesting. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was play Perth, I think. Yeah, they okay. Were. All right. This is a, this is our last one today okay. for this. All right. What is Eric Singer's given name? Eric Messenger or something like that. You're right. Yeah. It's like Messenger, me Messinger, messenger, like yeah. Singer. It's, he took the M E N off, so that's why it's just that uh, was a Eric good Singer. Choice. He yeah. took the M E N off of the beginning. So yeah. interesting. It's kind of like you know those other rock stars that well. So Mark know, zero Simmons points. Yes. Mark yeah. got zero points. Yes, in, just so you know, all know. Well, it wasn't any uh, Thanks yes, for pointing yes that out. or rush trivia. Maybe we need to put right. back. Oh, the, again. We need to do a kiss quiz because Mark does well when it comes to geography. He beats the That's true. out of the rest. Yep. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so that's it. So they, you know, if uh, anyone else out there has lyrics that we missed, yeah. I'm sure there's a lot of that were either positive or they enjoy the theme of the lyrics you know list your songs out that you uh enjoy and and why you know those lyrics so and then uh and what are your views on you know aces uh 10,000 volts you know the review julian wrote i know there's been a lot of good positive uh, uh replies to his his post of the his review so yeah, which was very thorough. So, so anyway, anyway, once again, uh, from me, Daniel, Lonnie, and Mark, thank you for joining us one more time. Thanks. Thank you for spending time listening to the Kiss FAQ podcast today. 
All sales are final, there are no refunds. If you'd like, look us up on Facebook or come over to the KISS FAQ message board and discuss the topic we've broadcast today. Don't forget to rate us on iTunes, Spreaker, or wherever you've listened to the show. We hope you'll join us again.